Philip, if I have to admit to you, at the end of the day, after all of my strivings, I really want to know, is there an afterlife? First, let's imagine that we can make sense of the view that there's some sort of higher divine power. I've called it panentheism, a sense of a divine that includes the world within itself, but is also more than that world. And so if you'll give me that as a premise. I'll give you anything you want. <laughs> get me an afterlife, you, you get anything. Right, and imagine that there's something that it is to be you or me, which is more than the sum total of the physical parts of what we are, right? And thirdly, imagine that this divine being has a property of being eternal, that it pre-existed the world, somehow was creatively involved in creating the world, and survives even after the end of this physical universe. And the trouble is, even with those three assumptions, there's not necessarily a continued personal existence after death, because it might be that the only way in which you survive is as a memory within the divine. A divine who, who has experienced every moment of your life and forgets nothing. What does that mean? People can keep photographs of me after I die. Uh, what does that mean? Oh, but this is more than that. Imagine that you've been uh, intimately known, every thought, every response, every part of your body known during your lifespan. You know, that kind of makes me mad at this pantheistic, panentheistic God of yours. I, I, he, he's taking advantage of me. He made me live my life and struggle, and now he's got my memories, and I don't have existence? You can keep him. So let's see if we can get something stronger, okay? And this is how it would go. If we can exist within the divine now, in panentheism, we exist as subjective centers of activity within the overarching divine. That's not trivial, because in much of the history of Western philosophy and theology, one couldn't think those two together. A subjective substance and a God as substance can't exist at the same time in the same place. They have to be separated. On this view, if it works, it allows us already in the here and now to understand a divine subjective presence, including subjective moments within it. Now let's see if we could think that into the future after our death. Right. And I'll call it the position of eschatological hope. Eschaton means the, the doctrine of final things, and hope because it can't be a proof. It's only, I would say, fair. a, a co coherent hope. Okay. And this is how it would go. After the death of my body, is it possible that that subjective part of myself, which is more than the body, is retained in existence within the divine, not supported by the atoms and molecules that support thought now, but supported directly by the divine presence. And your argument is, is because it's there now. Yeah. If it's possible for that to happen now, my argument, it would be possible for it to happen in the future after the death of my body. So I guess the big step is the first, if, if it can happen now. I mean, I'm, I'd be more willing to give you the second step if to give you the first. The first step's tough. Oh, well, we've done pretty well then. I mean, if you'll give me the second step, a lot of philosophers resist that one. Then it turns out, and this is a lovely development of the conversation, that the question of survival of death isn't about the future, it's about whether we can understand ourselves now as being real subjects within a divine presence. If yes, then the second step is not so hard. But if that notion here and now is incoherent, we're stuck. Because what can traditional theism do? It has to create some kind of place to put all these substances, these selves, because they can't be within God. So you get in the, at the end of the Bible, the new Jerusalem, a new heaven and a new earth, with streets made out of gold, I presume golden lampposts and so forth. That's not a, a, a belief of the afterlife I could hold. But if now we exist in some way within the divine, then I could imagine a space not of streets and lampposts, a space of divine presence where we might exist in the future.